As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak, and you comfort those in need, and you lift us up on wings, lift us up on wings like eagles. strong deliverer our God you reign forever our hope our strong deliverer you are the everlasting God the everlasting God you do Comfort those in me. You lift us up on wings like eagles. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the Defender of the weak, and you comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. And you comfort those in need. And you lift us up on wings like eagles.
the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide It trembles at His voice It trembles at His voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see how great How great our God and age to age he stands and time is in his hand beginning and the end beginning and the end the God had three Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great, how great. Our God, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God.
Well, welcome on this beautiful afternoon to St. Andrew's Church, and if you're able to, will you please join me standing together as we worship God by singing, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. A very warm welcome to St Andrew's Burgess Hill on this really momentous afternoon uh, for this congregation, for this parish, this church and for the deanery. Uh, it is wonderful to welcome you. Welcome particularly if you are a visitor or a guest. I know there's people here from the community of Burgess Hill, civic guests, some head teachers. Uh, welcome to the clergy of the deanery and ecumenical brothers and sisters from churches uh, of Burgess Hill Town. It is really an absolute uh, joy and privilege to be leading this service. My name's Ruth Bushshager. I'm the Bishop of Horsham. And um, I've been part of uh, the discernment, really, with both congregations of the Point Church and of St. Andrews for, for many, many months about this new chapter uh, in the story of both churches as they come together to create, from today onwards, a new church blended family uh, here at St Andrews. So I just want to start by saying thank you. Thank you to members of The Point. Thank you to members of St Andrews, all of you who have prayed and fasted and discerned with me uh, the Lord's will. And as far as we can tell, this is what the Holy Spirit is calling us to be and to do in his name and for his glory. So thank you for your courage in taking this step. Archdeacon. Bishop Ruth, we present to you Reverend William Kemp, apt to be admitted as priest in charge of this parish, and the Reverend Felicity Davis to be admitted as associate priest of this parish. Thank you. Let us pray for Will and Felicity, and for this parish to be committed to their care. God, our Father, Lord of all the world, we thank you that through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry each may be an instrument of your love, and give to your servants will and felicity, and all who minister in this place the needful gifts of grace, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We're going to remain standing to sing, and at this point the children and young people are going to go out. There's amazing activities and all sorts of good things prepared for them in the halls next door. Um, if you have uh, brought children and young people and you're not sure where to go or what to do, there are wonderful people here at this door uh, who can point them in the right direction. So just bring them forward uh, to this door to my right, and we shall continue to worship God. Worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. And see what the Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great. of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive, and break every chain, oh God, you have done great and we dance in your freedom, awaken the thought, oh Jesus, I say, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have 
reading for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him there that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathaniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be glorifying to you, O Lord. Amen. Do please be seated. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, and he brought him to Jesus. Well, friends, as this new chapter begins today for St Andrew's Church, we're going to focus our minds on the original Saint Andrew himself. And we discover Andrew here in the very first chapter of John's Gospel. And what we discover about the disciple Andrew is profoundly significant for the spiritual DNA of this new church family as you go forward from here. Uh, so to set the scene there in John chapter 1, John is telling us about the calling of the very first followers of Jesus. And there's an excitement in the passage as Jesus is starting to become known more widely and as he calls people to himself, we see one by one those people drawing others to come and see what this rabbi from Nazareth is really all about. And the action happens at a place called Bethany where John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, is telling anyone who will listen that they need to get their lives ready because God's king has arrived and he's here to rescue the world from sin and to fill his people with the Holy Spirit. And a man called Andrew appears and he has heard John the Baptist and he has believed that what John is saying is true. Andrew trusts the truth of John's testimony. And then John sees his cousin Jesus coming and points him out to Andrew and says, this is the one, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, it's a funny phrase, isn't it? What is John saying when he used that strange phrase? He's saying, you know, Andrew, as a good Jew, 
All these years we've been celebrating Passover festivals, all these centuries we've been remembering how God rescued his people from slavery in Egypt and brought them into liberation as his people, free to worship him and live for him and be a light for the whole world to see his glory. Andrew, all these years we've been killing lambs and the lamb's blood every year has been for us a picture of the protection of God against judgment and freedom and life. Well, now, John says, now, this is the real thing. All of that was a prophetic picture here in Jesus. He is the Lamb of God, the Messiah, the King, and he's come into the world to put death to death and to bring freedom for all people forever. It's an astonishing claim in just a few words, isn't it? And Andrew, right there and then, seems to have an understanding of the enormity of this. He becomes a follower of Jesus. He has faith that John's testimony is true and that Jesus is the saviour of the world. It is quite a moment. Andrew is actually a very faith-filled person. Because at this point, he doesn't have any evidence for what he's put his trust in. He hasn't seen Jesus do any miracles He hasn't heard Jesus give the Sermon on the Mount. He hasn't heard any parables. He hasn't seen Jesus suffer or die or rise again. Now, Andrew will see all these things. But at this point, Andrew is stepping into the adventure of faith. He trusts that John's testimony is true. And he begins a relationship with Jesus as a follower a disciple, an apprentice in the kingdom of God, someone who wants to be where Jesus is, wants to become like Jesus, who wants to do the things that Jesus does. So, St. Andrews, that must be deeply in your DNA as you launch your new church family tonight, this spiritual gift of faith, a deep trust in the word of testimony, in the scriptures, That no, you've never seen Jesus on earth in the flesh, but you will be people like Andrew who are full of faith, full of willingness to trust in Jesus as God's rescuing king and his work of salvation. So we see there Andrew's personal response to be a follower, and then we see the next thing that must be essential to this church's DNA, has been in the past, will continue to be going forward. Let's see there in verse 41. It says, the first thing Andrew did was to go and find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah. Verse 42, and he brought Simon to Jesus. Andrew is one of the first evangelists we read about in all the Gospels. Evangelism is a bit of a a word, it has has sort of mixed overtones, doesn't it, in our culture? Um, Some negative overtones, evangelism, evangelists. Uh, If you watch the cartoon The Simpsons, uh, you'll know Ned Flanders. Do you like Ned Flanders? He's a sort of archetype Christian evangelist. He's very devout, very sincere, he has terrible facial hair. And he sort of goes around systematically destroying relationships with his neighbours through inappropriate faith sharing. So he's a kind of negative evangelist in some ways. But in recent years, evangelism in the sort of secular job market has had a bit of a revival. It's become a positive buzzword. Companies are falling over themselves. You might be in a company like this to try and hire marketing evangelists, digital evangelists, brand evangelists. Anyone work in a business like that? Yeah, a few nods. The reason is everyone is trying to get in on the business of word of mouth marketing. Especially with social media, the very best thing you can do as a company is to get your customers to tell their own friends about you. There is nothing, nothing more persuasive than people telling their own friends and family that they've discovered something and found that it's great. Now, modern companies are in on this, but it was God's idea from the start. This is how it works. It's very simple. Jesus calls people to follow him, and they go and find people to follow him. And Jesus' followers from the very beginning, you never hear them say the following, I found the saviour of the world, and I'm keeping the news to myself. 
I found the saviour of the world, but I know that this is private religion. I found Jesus, but this is my own personal truth just for me. It would be wrong to share it with others in case it offends them. What we see is the opposite. We see wonderful personal evangelism. The Bible says the first thing Andrew does, his priority response is to go and find his brother Simon and he tells him, we have found God's saving king. We have found the one. That word found in the Greek, in the ancient Greek, I'm going to tell you the Greek and you'll say, yeah, we knew that word already. We have found, the word is eureka. Isn't that wonderful? Eureka, a great, amazing, exciting, life-changing discovery. Jesus is Andrew's Eureka. We have found God's promised saviour. Simon, I have to share this news with you. Come and meet him for yourself. Andrew knows his job is to introduce other people to Jesus and then let Jesus do what only Jesus can do, which is to speak into people's hearts and lives and call them to himself so they can have their own Eureka their own discovery of God's truth and grace. Our calling is to introduce our friends to the person of Jesus. Uh, becoming a Christian is not about understanding the whole Bible or signing up to a list of beliefs or rules of behaviour. These things are what many people often think Christianity is all about. They think it's a set of beliefs, rules, an invitation, perhaps, to join a narrow-minded religious social club. And uh, if they think that, a lot of the time, that's our fault, not theirs. Uh, and if you're a guest tonight, uh, if you're not a Christian, we are so thrilled that you've come. Thank you so much for coming and being here for this really significant day in the life of this community. We are thrilled you're here. And uh, please do come and talk to me afterwards, because I'd love to hear about your experience and perspective on these things. But if you're a Christian here, our invitation to others is to come and see for yourself. Come and discover Jesus, the Jesus that we've been transformed by. Now this DNA for faith and evangelism, this has always been the DNA of the Point Church from the very beginning of that church 20 years ago. It's always been the DNA of St. Andrew's Church. And as together you come today as a blended family, here's your challenge. You are going to have to keep your eye on your heart for mission, on your faith and your evangelism. And make sure that they stay front and center in all that you do. Because as I was preparing to speak to you today, I did feel that at this point in your story, the risk is you will be derailed from your core purpose because the enemy would love to see you derailed at this point and be distracted or divided by other concerns so that you don't quite become the missional community that God wants you to become. I was speaking recently to a fascinating family and I just want to share a little bit about their story because it speaks so much into your story. And they are a family of eight children and two parents, a mum and a dad. And their story is that the mum, the mum was married and she had four children. And very sadly, soon after the fourth child was born, her husband died. And the dad in this family, he was married and they had four children. And really sadly, his wife died, the mum of those four children, she died when the kids were quite small. And uh, both families are Christian families. And the widow and the widower went to a bereavement group in the church. And they met each other. And they fell in love. And they came to me to ask me to marry them, which I gladly did. And so God created a beautiful, blended family of a widow and a widower and eight children. I've had the privilege of knowing this family now for over 10 years. And watching them blend into one family? What can they teach you to help you not become distracted or divided from your core mission to be a united missional family of God? 
Well, the first thing, uh, so I, I, I wrote to her then, and I said, I'm doing this amazing thing with this church, and uh, these two churches coming together, we're making a blended family spiritually. What, what's your, you know, you've done it literally with your family. What's your advice? So here's their advice for you. First thing they said, the blend meant change for everyone. Everyone's role changed. Everyone's relationship changed. The blend meant a season of accepting the upheaval of change and being honest about the challenges. Everyone stepping into the change with maturity because of God's calling to be one family. And they said this, we had to learn to let go of good things in order to take hold of the new thing that God had for us. And she said, that's not easy. She said, some of the most difficult issues arise over everyone's most cherished traditions because we get very sentimental, don't we? We get very protective about established traditions. Nobody likes change. So she said, the message for you today is to treat your first Christmas very carefully. I thought that was, that was wise advice. Thank, it's a long way off. You'll be, you'll be sorted by then. Uh, secondly, this family's advice was start by committing to pray together. They said, you must celebrate together, you must party together, you must make memories together, but start by learning how to pray together. Because this will unite you in a spiritual bond that will serve you very well in the spiritual battles that will inevitably part of your story as you are a family on mission. Lastly, and I thought, I could have guessed the other two, but I didn't guess this one. They said... In the first season of our blended family, we agreed it would be a time of unusual financial generosity. As a new family, they recognized they needed to put a higher than normal resource into activities and treats that they wouldn't normally have had, but that would build their relationships and blend them together as they invested in their new family. And so even tonight, you've got the wisdom to say, we're going to have beautiful food. We're going to have pulled pork and all the trimmings and do it really, really well. We could have had weak orange squash and stale digestive biscuits. You know, the normal Church of England affair. <laughs> We'd have been okay with that. But no, let's invest individually and corporately. Let's open up our giving to be especially generous towards getting this new family established on great foundations. And I'm going to end by reading out to you what the mum of the family wrote to me. She said this, The problem is, you have got to let go of the old before you can put on the new. Inevitably, that leaves you in a season in between where you don't know who you are anymore. You've gone too far forwards to be able to go back but you're not far enough forward that you belong there yet. And that, she says, was a bit scary. But we didn't know the joy, the joy that God had planned for us, the awesome work of hope and transformation that he had planned all along. So as we come now to license Will and Felicity and commission your new leadership team, may you be reminded each of your first love, that first eureka moment where you discovered the Jesus who changes everything. May you be inspired by St. Andrew's own example to be people full of faith and hearts for the mission of Jesus, to share him with others. And may God be your shield and protection in these early days as you learn to pray and as you invest in your life together. May his blessing rest upon you. Amen. We're going to stand to sing now before we license Will and Felicity. To my willing soul, 
Bring the presence of the risen Lord to renew my heart and make me whole. Cause your word to come alive in me. Give me faith for what I cannot see. Give me passion for your purity, Holy Spirit, breathe new life in me. Holy Spirit, come abide within, may your joy be seen in all I do. Love enough to cover every sin in each thought and deed and attitude. Kindness to the greatest and the least. Gentleness that souls the path of peace. Turn my striving into works of grace breath of god show christ in all i do holy spirit from creation's birth giving life to all that god has made show your power once again on earth Cause your church to hunger for you. Let the fragrance of our prayers arise. Lead us on the road to sacrifice. That in unity the things of Christ may be all the world. Your chances of our prayers arise. Lead us on the road of sacrifice. That in unity the face of Christ will be clear for all the world to see. Please be seated. The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. Will and Felicity. In the declarations you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, William Kemp, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorized or allowed by canon. I, William Kemp, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, William Kemp, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Chichester and his successors 
in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Felicity Davies, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness, and in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I, Felicity Davies, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Felicity Davies, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Chichester and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Ruth, Bishop of Horsham, commissary for this purpose, appointed by the Right Reverend Father in God, Martin, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Chichester, to William Kemp, Clark, grace, mercy and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Whereas the benefice of Burgess Hill St Andrew, within the diocese and jurisdiction of the said Lord Bishop, has become vacant and is at present destitute of an incumbent, I do hereby grant you licence and authority to serve during the diocesan bishop's pleasure or until the admission of an incumbent to the said benefice, whichever period shall be the shorter, as priest in charge of the said benefice, and to perform all ecclesiastical duties belonging to that office. And so I commend you to Almighty God, humbly praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that his blessing may rest upon your work, in testimony of which I have set my hand and affixed the seal of the Lord Bishop of Chichester this 24th day of March, in the year of our Lord, 2024. Ruth, Bishop of Horsham, commissary for this purpose, appointed by the Right Reverend Father in God, Martin, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Chichester, to our beloved in Christ, Felicity Ann Davies, Clark, grace, mercy and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I do hereby grant to you license and authority to serve as Associate Vicar of the Benefice of Burgess Hill St Andrew 
within the Diocese of Chichester under the direction of the incumbent or priest in charge thereof and to perform all ecclesiastical duties belonging to the said office. And so I commend you to Almighty God, humbly praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that his blessing may rest upon you and your work, in testimony of which I have set my hand and affixed the seal of the Lord Bishop of Chichester this 24th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024. Keep your eyes fixed upon Jesus, who was wounded for our sins, that you may bear in your life and ministry the love and joy and peace which are the marks of Jesus in his disciples. The Spirit of God rest upon you, filling you with wisdom, understanding, and the fear of the Lord. The peace of Christ stand guard over your heart and mind. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Should we give them a round of applause? Felicity, I hope you heard that applause. I hope you really heard it. Because what's happening here doesn't normally happen. Because normally Christian leaders are too defended and too insecure to let what's happening here really happen. And it's honestly your leadership, your humility, your heart to seek the Lord's will and to put yourselves you know, submitted to his word. It's extraordinary leadership. And um, so I hope you heard the love and support that's behind. I know you know it. I know you know it. But well done. Well done. Felicity and Will cannot lead alone. They will not lead alone. Uh, they're supported by uh, the whole congregation, united, blended family. Uh, but uh, in particular, in terms of leadership, we're now just going to call forward, uh, first of all, the new staff team, and then we're going to ask them to be joined by uh, the wider new leadership team. So we've got James Allen is the new head of operations here. James, wonderful James. Do come forward when I call your name. Stuart, worship pastor, Stuart. Dean, Dean, our youth pastor, is coming. Don't be shy. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to not be shy. Uh, Lucy, children and young families pastor. Ellie, administrator. There's Ellie. Ellie's coming. We've got Julia, administrator. Julia's away. We've got Kevin, our caretaker here, and the wonderful Sophie Cleaner. Um, so we've got a uh, roving microphone. And have we got, at this point, I think... And Eugene as well. And Eugene. Assistant worship. Assistant Eugene. I, he was... Where are you? I saw you leading on guitar. Eugene, assistant worship pastor, do come forward, hooray. Thank you, Eugene. Right, um, you're going to have to come, come right up, come right up, come right up. All very shy, all very shy. Welcome, welcome. Do come forwards, do come forwards. I'm going to get Dean to stand here, and Lucy is going to stand here. There's a sweet, little switcheroo. Um, so this is just a wonderful, um, a little snapshot, really, of the blend 
that God has been doing between the two staff teams. Uh, so we haven't got time to interview anybody, um, uh, but I'm just going to say uh, to Dean, who's a new youth pastor, and to Lucy, the children and families pastor. Uh, Dean, what's your vision for your new role? Well, I'm, I'm really excited for us to have a physical home for our youth ministry and our youth. Um, we have about 50 youth who are members of the youth group, um, and about half that number will be coming every Sunday, I hope, at least. Um, and uh, what I want is for this place uh, to be a, a base for them to come, to um, be encouraged, to be loved, to love one another, uh, to get to know the love that Jesus has for them more every time they come, and then to go out feeling equipped to share the love that they have for Jesus in their community and in their schools. That's what I want this place to be for them. Amen to that vision. And how long have you been a Christian, Dean? Uh, 20 21 years. years you've been a Christian. Yeah, so nearly half, my life. nearly half your life. You're very young. Uh, what's the maths on that? Um, tell us a couple of things you have learned to really love about Jesus. Um, something that really has st strikes me about Jesus' character is how resolutely focused on his purpose um, he is and was when he was walking the earth. Um, he doggedly pursued the purpose that Father God sent him to earth for every single day, um, to love the Father, to love people, and to ultimately die on the cross for us in our place and to be raised to life. Um, and I think that's inspiring for each of us as we are trying to work out what our purpose is and what God's plan is for our lives and to then... Um, uh, try and pursue that with, uh, with purpose each day. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dean. And lovely Lucy. Lucy, the new children and families pastor, um, tell us what your vision is for your role. Thank you. Yeah, I want the children to know that they are the church. They're not the church of the future. They're the church right now. And I want them to, to embrace that scripture from 1 Timothy that says, don't worry about being young. Don't worry when people say, oh, you're too young. You don't know anything because they do know something. They know the love of Jesus. And we're going to love them and love them and love them so that they are so consumed by love in this church. And they will know that that is the love of Jesus. Awesome. Thank you, Lucy. How long have you been a Christian? Yeah. How, how many is how many years have you been, been a Christian? I've been a, I, I don't know a time when I didn't know Jesus. Oh, you've been a Christian your whole life. Yeah. So tell us, what have you learned to really love personally yourself about the Lord? Oh, thank you. I love Jesus because he is the same today as he was yesterday and will be tomorrow. He is unchanging. He is my rock, my foundation. Everything I do, I pray, is based on the love of Jesus. Awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much. And we're now going to ask um, the wider leadership team to come forward. So we've got seven members of the PCC and the Deanery Synod reps. If you would, don't be shy, come forward if you are um, on St. Andrew's PCC. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, I'm looking at Christine is keeping everything in order here. Oh, yes, brilliant. Um, fantastic. Should we give a round of applause to PCC? <laughs> Wonderful. And um, Mandy, a particular, particularly wonderful, Mandy and Celia have been extraordinary church wardens here um, to work with. Um, we love you, Mandy and Celia. And we've got point trustees, point trustees. Um, if you're a point trustee, do come forward. Um, we might need a second row. Do you want to come up? Point trustees, come up on the, on the platform. Come on. That's it, come up. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. That's it. <laughs> Gather in. Um, and we've got some really uh, wonderful volunteers who are really leading ministries, the, the new operational team. So Howard for pastoral care, uh, Caroline Kemp as lay pastor, Bob in the setup team coordinating, and Sheila, the prayer ministry team leader, and Sue, the, the parish safeguarding officer. So, and Sue, our reader. We've got our reader. Sue, is she here? Brilliant. Yes, brilliant, brilliant. Come, 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 come. Wonderful. Um, if we have missed you off the list, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, and yes, yes, priests and people. 
Um, so thank you to you all for your heart, for what God is calling you to do, and the sacrifice of leadership. We know leadership is costly, uh, but we are so thankful for you and all the ministry and discernment that you're going to lead. We're now going to pray and commission this team. People of God, Christ invites each of us to faithful discipleship and service, and we are all called to different ministries as we seek to live and proclaim God's love. As we commission this team today, we pray for them as servant leaders called to build up the church. So I'm going to turn and face this team and ask them to respond. Although you can't see the words on the screen anymore, can you? Ah, there are side screens. Are they working? Great. You haven't got a lot to say. I'll try and it's sort of, we do, we will, and with the help of God, we will. It's just, you know, give a big old yes, really. Um, you have been called to serve the gospel of Christ in this place. Do you believe that God has called you to this ministry? We do. Will you, as long as you're engaged in this work, seek to perform it prayerfully and in a spirit of mutual respect and collaboration with those who lead ministry in this place? With the help of God. And will you, as the people of God, here in this place, this is for the whole congregation, will you support and pray for these servants in their ministry? Yeah. I therefore commission you in your new roles as one leadership team in this parish, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May God grant you grace, wisdom and joy as you live out this calling. Amen. Amen. May Christ who came among us not to be served, but to serve, be your inspiration in all that you do and say. Amen. Amen. And so all of us, through faith in Jesus Christ, we are called into God's service. We pray together. Heavenly Father, from whom all blessings flow, we give you thanks and praise for all that you have called us to be by the power of your Holy Spirit, fan into flame the gifts you have given us to the glory of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We're going to continue praying now. We've got three people coming to lead us in intercessions. Uh, you can be off the hot seat now and back to your seat. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness and goodness. Through revealing your vision, as we celebrate this day, you joining two church families being blended as one. As we work together as a new church family at St Andrews, may each of the gifts you have given to us be an abundance of blessings overflowing. Holy Spirit, bring us all together as a family, as we get to know each other. We pray that we will work together in unity with understanding and love. As we enter this new season, we pray for Will and Felicity that we will support them with our love and prayers to bless and enrich their ministry. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Lord, we thank you for this youth group and how loving, accepting and welcoming they all are. Every single one of them is so lovely and it's such a blessing to be able to be a part of this amazing group of people. We thank you for everything they have done for this youth group, for the words you put in their mouths when they're sharing their testimonies and for how much their faith has all grown. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to bring this youth group to St. Andrews and for the amazing people who have welcomed us here with open arms. We are so happy to be a part of this community. We pray that now we have this permanent home, you can allow us to spread the gospel to the communities around us and to any new people you may bring to us. We pray for the youth leader. Sorry. We pray for the youth this year, Lord, that you help us, that you help them grow their faith as they open their hearts to you. We thank you for providing us over half the money we need for our mission trip. We pray that you help them raise the rest and this trip will change the lives of those going and for those that will reach out to while they're there. Lastly, Lord, I pray that this youth group will be such a blessing to the church and that they will bring friends and create this big family of St. Andrew's Church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Father, we do thank you for this glorious day where we can gather together and celebrate your leading, the fact that you are a good shepherd who leads us, the fact that we can be in the room together celebrating how you have led these two congregations through the Holy Spirit to be joined together. And in this day, we celebrate what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do. And Lord Jesus, we gather because of you, because of your life and death and your glorious resurrection and ascension, and we gather for you, for your glory and your fame in Burgess Hill. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you loved the church and gave yourself up for her. And I thank you that you are building your church. And we want to pray today for what you are building in this place as two congregations become one. We pray for relationships to be deepened that glorify Christ. And I pray for the faithful witness of this church that has been in this town for so many years. We pray for a new season of opportunity and of witness and of salvation. Lord, I pray that many, many people will bow the knee to Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives because of what you are doing in this moment, bringing these churches together. So we want to pray for your blessing and favor on what's happening today. And we want to pray ultimately, Jesus, that you would be glorified through it, because that is why we're here, to glorify the name of Jesus together. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's um, pray the prayer, words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Come on up, come on up. Well, it's... Uh a joy that we get to be able to do a few announcements now. No uh, church service is complete without a few announcements. Uh, just let me uh, say a few brief thank yous. Thank you so much to everyone for coming. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Bishop Ruth, for your vision, your leadership through this whole process. Uh, it's been uh, it's been such a I think a healthy and a and a good process largely because of your role in it, and thank you for taking the lead on that. We really appreciate it, and thank you for your, your leading us today. Um, I think church history is a, a history of 2,000 years of growth, but also 2,000 years really of splits and schisms and, and divisions, sadly. Um, and today we are, in a very small way, doing the opposite. We're, we're bringing 
uh, two churches together in unity, reversing that trend. And uh, I think that's a, a wonderful, joyful thing to be doing. Um, uh, I am so excited uh, by what God's got in store for us today. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful, um, wonderful sense of coming full circle because actually I, I stood in almost exactly this place 20 years ago, very nearly, uh, when we were commissioned by Ruth's predecessor but one, the, the Bishop of Horsham, Lindsay Irwin, commissioned us as the point uh, in this church to start our experiment uh, of church planting. And I just want to honor Ian and Jane Pryor. Uh, Ian was the vicar here at the time, and they're here today. And Ian, it's such a joy. Jane, thank you. You were part of supporting us, sponsoring us, backing us back then. And uh, it's extraordinary to be back today as the new vicar of St. Andrews. So could you just show your appreciation for Ian and Jane? Thank you, Ian. Uh, and, and thank you. We didn't announce the prayers, but thank you for those prayers. And especially that was Jim Partridge, pastor of the King's Church here in Burgess Hill. Thank you for your prayers, Jim. Amen to everything you prayed. Uh, we, you've done a bit of uh, church merging as well over there at the King's Church. And we look forward to working closely together in the future as we have been doing. Um, Jesus said, if you try to hold on to your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lay it down you'll find life to the full. And I think that's what we're going to need to do as we come together, making sacrifices on both sides, laying down our preferences for something truly wonderful that God wants to do here, to become one new church family. If you're here today and you're not part of a local church, then come and join us. We'd be absolutely delighted uh, to welcome you in to this one new church family. Uh, we want to get to know everyone, so one announcement is Caroline and I want to invite everyone for dinner. We can't fit you all in at once, um, but we're going to be doing Kemp's Kitchen on Wednesday nights. We'll sign up eight at a time, so the word will go out, and we would love to, uh, for everyone to come and to mix it up, because we need to come together and get to know each other. Uh, and so the one thing I want to encourage everyone, whether you've previously been at St. Andrews or at The Point, let's all come to everything to start with. So uh, we're running two services each Sunday morning, and very soon we're going to start a Sunday evening service. Let's all come to everything and meet one another. Don't think, oh, this is my service or that's my service. Let's get to know each other, build relationship, and be truly become one church family. So much potential, but the heart has got to be prayer. Our vision for this place is to be a place, a house of prayer. And Felicity's going to tell us a little bit about how this Holy Week is going to be a week of prayer as we start. Thanks, Phil. I'm so excited to be working with you, Will. It's great. So this, <laughs> this week, um, a great team of people are going to change this entire space into a prayer space, a creative prayer space, where we can walk the journey from today, Palm Sunday, to the death of Jesus on Good Friday and the resurrection on Easter Sunday. There'll be stations set up with things you can do and be involved in. So that'll be open from four to six tomorrow, 10 till six Tuesday on when and Wednesday, 10 till four on Thursday and between our Good Friday services. Please do come and make use of the space. It's going to be absolutely amazing. A Good Friday services are everyone intergenerational at 10 and a slightly quieter 2 o'clock hour at the cross. Easter Saturday, there's the standard Easter egg hunt for children, I think, at half past 12. And then on Easter Sunday, 7 o'clock dawn service out there on the green with a fire pit. I can't wait. Uh, with bacon butties after, I can't wait for that either. 9 o'clock, our communion service. And then that's going to be followed by fellowship for everyone, whichever service you go to. And an 11 o'clock contemporary Easter service. That's me done. Back to you, Will. Uh, and logistics now, very quickly, uh, as we come to a close. Uh, we, we're going to serve food for everyone who can stay, uh, but it's too crowded to come in and out through this door because we're going to have to come back into the church to eat. So when we finish, please could everybody, anyone who doesn't have any mobility issues, please go out the back door, out the west door, come around and back in through the link the way you entered in the first place, and the food will be served next door. Then either return into the church to eat and drink, drinks are at the back, or go into the rider hall 
uh, where the live music will be. Soulville, the band are going to be playing. They'll be terrific. Um, so do go on in there to eat and drink and celebrate. Uh, we, are, we have two photographers. We're taking photographs. Tim and Amelia are taking photographs. We don't have any pictures of us as a blended family yet uh, because we've been two different churches. So we need lots of pictures for the website today of us all having a good time together. Uh, if you would prefer for your image not to be used on our website or any social media, please have a word with one of the welcome team or myself. We'll make sure you're not used. And we won't be taking, using any pictures of children without consent from parents and carers. Uh, and parents and carers, you're in charge of your children after the service. We are no longer supervising. The bouncy castle will be up at the back, but please keep an eye out for where the young people are. Thank you very much, Bishop. Oh, prayer. oh we're leading a prayer. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> oh, you got it. I haven't got my glasses. <laughs> Thanks be to Thee, O Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which Thou hast given us, for all the pains and insults which Thou hast borne for us. O merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know Thee more clearly, love Thee more dearly, and follow Thee more nearly. Amen. Shall we stand for the blessing? Um, as we do, I'd love to get one of the photographers. I can see, um, yes, you, sir. Uh, would you like to come up? Uh, because no one can see the view that I've got. And it's such a good view. And it only ha these things only happen for a second. So um, yeah, young people come up. And I'm going to ask the clergy if they would fill this middle bit here. Would you come now? Because uh, we'll all process out um, after the blessing. But would the clergy fill this space in the middle here? Don't be shy. The clergy won't be shy. And, um, and I, I just thought you could stand here. Because isn't it a great shot? We don't want to lose this opportunity. So before the blessing, we're just going to smile. And uh, shall we do that? I know it's off script and we all want our bacon butter. But um, great. Will and Felicity, Archdeacon, Christine, let's come in the middle here. Thank you. Right, we have to smile and say Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Is that good? Yeah, that's the money shot. Right. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Eternal God, source of every gift and grace through your Son, Jesus Christ, you grant us your blessings that the church might be nourished and strengthened. Bless Will and Felicity and this congregation today. Confer upon them the gifts of your Spirit. May they be filled with apostolic zeal to proclaim the gospel and remain humble in heart as they serve your household, the church. Bring us at the last into the peace of your kingdom with all the saints, where all honour and glory are yours, Lord our God, for ever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of you, remain with you and those who you love and pray for this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.